Life is full. It's full of beautiful moments, hard moments, and a whole lot of mundane in between. Often we find ourselves going through the motions and we end up seeing mostly the hard, mostly the boring, and failing to see the good in our days at all. With Intention is a podcast about changing the narrative. I'm your host, Desiree, and I'm no expert at living intentionally. I'm just here to share my personal learnings alongside stories from others about how we're learning to see the beauty in the mundane, celebrate our beautiful, ordinary, everyday lives, and approach every aspect of them with intention. We'll talk about things like motherhood and family, reflecting and taking care of ourselves, our work, our homes, all the things that make up our days. My hope is that you'll leave our conversations reminded that our beautiful, hard, ordinary, mundane days, this messy life, it's full of good and it's full of purpose and it's meant to be lived well with the utmost intention. I'm so glad you're here. Let's get to today's episode. Welcome back to With Intention. I'm your host, Desiree, and this is episode 110. I am so excited to be celebrating 110 episodes by talking about a subject that I really love, and that is reading. My guest today is Elisa Henry, and she is a mom of a toddler and game show host. But I have Elisa on the show today to talk about her accomplishment of reading 100 plus, more than 100 books in 2020. I have followed Elisa on Instagram for a while now, and we've become friends virtually thanks to Instagram. And I am so honored that I got to bring her on the show to talk about this accomplishment because I followed her journey as she continually shared the books that she was reading. I don't know about you, but I love reading. It's something that has always provided me with comfort and rest and enjoyment. But lately, I have struggled to actually sit down and read the books. It's a habit I would really like to get back into my life. And my conversation with Elisa today has motivated me to do that. And I think it will do the same for you, whether you have always been a reader or whether you just want to read more often and start this habit in your own life. The things we talk about will actually apply to other habits as well. Like I said, Elisa also has a toddler, so we talk about creating a culture of reading within our families as well. I had so much fun with this conversation, and I hope that you have just as much fun listening in. So let's get to my conversation with Elisa. I am so excited to have Elisa Henry on the podcast today. Elisa and I have gotten to know each other through Instagram, which is funny a funny way to like make friends, but it's a real way to make friends, especially through a pandemic when you don't see people as much. But Elisa, I just love following along with your life. And um, I feel like your life is super interesting. So before we get started, we're going to talk about reading today, actually. But before we get started, could you tell our listeners a little bit more about who you are and what you do? Well, I am so excited to talk to you because I think I came across you when I decided I was going to be a minimalist. And then you had your minimalish podcast. And I was like, this is so perfect. And uh, I'm, I never did become a minimalist, but I did start following you. And, and I really have enjoyed your podcast. I enjoy following your Instagram. I've enjoyed watching your transition to your new with intention podcast. So I'm really excited to talk to you today. So thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. I'm so excited to have you on. Um, I love that you say you never became a minimalist. That's so funny to me. And I, I just think to like, you know, those principles can be helpful in anyone's life. It doesn't have to be a title. And that's, that's why I've shifted myself too. Um, but I want you to tell everyone who's listening along, just like what your life looks like, um, what, what you do for work, what your, what your days look like, basically, what are your days made up with? So I am a wife and a mom. My son is three and a half. He'll be four. Uh, this summer. And um, I also work as a TV lottery game show host, which is a very unique job. There's not any other state lottery game shows in the country. There used to be a lot, but now Ohio is the last, Ohio, Cash Explosion is the last state lottery game show. So I host that game show and it airs weekly all over the state of Ohio and in parts of West Virginia. And then outside of that, I am a stay-at-home mom to my son because the way the job works is great work-life balance. I don't have to spend a lot of time there. So um, the time that I'm not at work, I'm at home with my, with my son. So yeah, I'm, I'm on Instagram, Elisa Henry TV. 
Awesome. I, um, I love that you're able to have a job that gives you that balance and such a cool job too. Um, yeah. A lot of people ask me, you're the laundry girl, aren't you? I'm like, yeah, I used to work on the news. I used to be a news reporter for a long time, about uh, almost six years before I became the lottery game show host. And I love working in the news, but, um, I think the job I have now is great for this season in my life. So, yeah. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I'm sure it's a lot higher stress to be um, working in the news and I'm sure much more demanding on your time. I love following along with kind of what you do with the rest of your days, um, what your days with your son look like. Um, you even have like a Instagram for him, right? The toddler around town. Is that right? Yes. Toddler around town, which I created pre-pandemic <laughs> when we used to go places all the time. And I felt like a lot of moms weren't really sure what they could do with their kid. And so I would go to all these places and post about it. And then the pandemic happened. And so it's, uh, it's not updated as often, but, but I do still update like fun activities to do with your toddler around town. And even if you don't live in Columbus, you can still get ideas from that that maybe are where you live, the same thing. Yeah, I think I've seen, I think I've actually done that. Like I've seen you post something that you're doing and I just looked around my area to see if there was something similar because I personally am just like, I'm not super brave. To, I have, we have the same age um, children. So mm -hmm. I'm not super brave about taking her places sometimes, especially on my own. It just, you know, I always think it like feels harder than it's actually going to be. So when I see you post it, I'm like, okay. I can do this. This looks <laughs> going to be fun for everyone. Cool. That makes me happy. That's why I do it. It's so that people can feel comfortable and know that it is fun, especially as they get older. It's been much easier the older that he gets. So, and it's been interesting though with the pandemic because people aren't sure what's reopened, what the protocols are. So I try to shine some light on that too. Yeah, absolutely. It has been a strange year, but it has been a year where kind of the... I don't know if I want to call it a habit or the activity, I guess, that we're going to talk about today um, could be something that could have flourished. And if not, at least for me, um, we're going to talk about reading. And I just kind of admitted to you before we started, I'm an English teacher and I have not even completed a book like for fun on my own other than stuff for school this year so far. And it is almost April. So that feels like... I don't know, not good, <laughs> but, but that's because I love reading and I, I wish that that wasn't the case. Um, but I have been super inspired watching you and just like the amount, um, the volume of books that you read, but also, uh, it really seems that you create a culture for reading within your home and with your son, which has been a little bit of a struggle for me as well, which again, I'm an English teacher and I just feel like it shouldn't be, but <laughs> I want to dive into that. So has this always been something that has become a part of your life? Why is this an important habit to you? Just talk to me about what reading is to you and what it looks like in your life. Okay. Well, first I want to say I am not an expert on this topic because I think that it is such a, I mean, reading is so broad and there are people who have written volumes on reading and what books you should read and how you can start a habit and how you can get your kids into reading. And for me, it's all just been doing it. If that kind of makes sense. So um, I have always loved reading. I started, I learned how to read when I was around three. And now that I have a three-year-old, I know how crazy that sounds. <laughs> so because my son is nowhere near that, but, um, but I've always been somebody who loves reading, but I haven't always had time for it. And I haven't always made time for it. So I think in uh, back in 2018 is when I thought, you know, I should start I should start reading more because I was thinking like I hadn't read a book in like, I don't know, maybe two books in five years. Like I just felt like, why do I not read as, uh, as much as I wanted to? So I think that year I read 30 books and it was literally me on New Year's Eve, like cramming in that 30th book. And I was so happy. I felt so accomplished. And that is a big accomplishment for somebody who hadn't been reading very much at all. And 2019, I kind of switched my focus to running. And then in 2020, I actually, I read 109 books, which sounds insane, <laughs> but it wasn't, my initial goal wasn't really a number. I had just started to read more and then um, different things happened throughout the year. As we know, a global pandemic that had us at home. I also had chosen to give up social media for Lent 
um, the 40 day fast. So I had more time to read there. And then it started to become like a, almost like a goal where every week, every month I'm like, Oh my gosh, I read, you know, seven books this month. Let's see if I can do seven again. And then, and at one point my husband said, do you think you could read 50 books and then 75 books? And he was like, what did you read a hundred books? And I'm like, there's no way I can read a hundred books. But then I did. So I think that it, it started off with me just wanting to read more. And then I turned it into like a goal oriented habit, which I kind of changed for this year because I don't want it to be like, Last year I read a hundred books and I think that'd be great if I do that again, but it got to be like around October, I was like, okay, I have this book or this book. This book is longer. So I'm going to pick the shorter book so I can like check that off <laughs> instead of it being like, this is what I want to read. So I think that it, it's, if you're like a self-competitive person, like competitive with yourself, then you know that it's easy to do things to like check it off as opposed to do it for the enjoyment. So I wanted to make sure I kept doing it for the enjoyment. And that's a very long answer. (laughs) No, that's so interesting. And it's really interesting to hear that, like it started basically out of what I'm sure a lot of us feel of like, I love reading, but I'm not making time for it. And, you know, making a goal is obviously a good way to change that. And whether or not, you know, you want to get an extreme, extreme like goal oriented. It's just kind of cool that you were able to do that last year. Um, I'm sure it was a positive side to being at home more um, and all of the terrible things that were happening. So uh, I guess the biggest question that I have is how, um, how did you do it? Because even in that first year, when you read 30 books, that's a lot of books and then jump to, you know, 100 last year, how do you find time for it? Um, how do you time, find time for it now, even when you're not like pushing for this big number? Uh, you have, like, like you said, you have a toddler, um, you do have a job, even if it doesn't take up a ton of your time. It's still, even if, you know, even someone who is not working a full-time job and someone who is like still, it's still about making time for it. So what does that look like for you? It's definitely about making time for it. And I think that that was how I kind of got motivated was hearing other people. Like there's a girl named Kelsey. She, I had met her husband when I was doing a podcast actually. And he told me like, yeah, my wife read a hundred, is reading a hundred books this year. And I'm like, what? So I follow her on Instagram, this stranger. And I messaged her like, how are you reading all these books? You know? So, and it's just, I think it is when you are hearing about somebody else doing it and just curious. And that's, that's probably the biggest question that I get. And I always say that, number one is like deciding to read. And I think that that um, sounds simple, but it it is like a decision. It's like, okay, you know, people say, I want to read more, I want to read more. Okay, but are you reading? Like, you know, I think that deciding to, a big thing with me too is audiobooks. And I know people, I know there are some people who feel like they can't focus on audiobooks or they don't really like them. I, I like audiobooks. I like podcasts. I like watching TV. So like the whole audio thing is, is fine with me. I like listening to music. So, um, so for me, audiobooks were a great way to add in more time for reading because sometimes I can't find time to sit down with a book for, you know, 20 minutes. Sometimes all I have is 20 minutes to like wash dishes. So then I'm washing dishes and I'm listening to an audiobook. And, um, and I don't always listen to it on one speed. I'll listen to it on like 1.2, 1.3 speed. 1.5 is probably the max for me. <laughs> Some people listen to it way faster than that, but um, I still want to be able to understand what they're saying. So, um, so yeah, audiobooks have been a huge, um, huge for me in terms of reading. Also, I always know what book I'm going to read next. So I probably have a list of five books, for instance, that I know I want to read in April. So as, as I finish one book, I know what book I'm going to next. So I'm not wasting any time trying to figure out what I want to read and researching and looking on bookstagram or looking at Goodreads. I already know what books I want to read. I might, I might change that. I might make adjustments, but I'm not wasting time trying to figure out what to read next. And so um, that helps a lot. And also I think, I think people will be surprised by how much time, like how much time you actually do have. And I think deciding to read over doing other activities and, and that was one of my jokes about this year was that 
I have so much Netflix to catch up on. <laughs> I'm like, so I don't want to read a hundred books because I want to watch Bridgerton. I want to watch like all these shows everyone talks about, but I don't watch any of the shows because I'm like always reading. And, um, and I think you're just deciding what to do instead. So um, that's something too. And with my toddler, he doesn't always make it easy. It's hard for me to watch television with him in the room because his toys are so loud and he's so loud. And so sometimes I'll just turn on his show and then he's watching a show and I can like read a book for a few minutes. So I think that, um, again, it's just deciding to do one thing over the other. I spend a lot of time on Instagram. Like I spend a lot of time on social media. It's like embarrassing, but sometimes I just, I'm scrolling through Instagram and I'm like, you know what? I could be reading right now. So I'll like get off of it and I'll like read something. So it's just making those like small decisions and my son's swim class. He is, he's in class with a swim teacher there's a soundproof glass. So all I can do is see. So I just listen to my audio book while I'm watching him do a swim class. It's just finding those moments of, um, of, of being able to read and also reading books that I want to come back to. And so that helps too, because I'm looking for that time to read the book because I enjoy it. If it's a book I don't enjoy, then I'm not going to want to find time to read it, if that makes sense. Yeah, that I love so much of that. I love the idea of audiobooks. I I still have struggled to like really get into them, but I think that I I think I'm just thinking of it wrong. Like I think when I think of reading, like I want to sit and relax and like be cozy. And so I can listen to a podcast while I do dishes, but for some reason like I don't know what it is whenever I have like this mental block there, but I think I just need to get past it. Um, but I also just love that idea of, of making the choice of what you're doing with your time, because I know um, I've been like on and off of Instagram lately because I just realized how much time it does take up, especially just with my habits with it. Like it doesn't have to take up that much time to, <laughs> and it can be a helpful that like there are great things on Instagram that can add to my life, but I get so sucked into it. I can totally relate to that. But yeah, it's, it's amazing. Like what, what kind of time it gives you back when you're like, okay, I'm just going to put the phone down. Even if you're saying like, Oh, I'm going to delete the app for the day. And you know, what, what else could you do with that time? So, um, I, I love all of those tips, all of those ideas of what it looks like in your life. If you do start a book that you don't like, are you the type of person that has to finish it? Or do you just no? Okay. I, I think that time is so valuable and wasting it is like, and, and I do try to take a lot of care when I'm choosing books because I'm like, I don't want to like waste time having read half of a book and I don't like it. There are times where I will power through because I am like, I've already read half of it. I might as well finish it. But there's definitely been a few times where I've been reading the book and in the beginning, I know I'm not going to like this. I'm not going to waste time reading it. And then, you know, that's time that can be spent doing or reading something else. So there's tons of books out there and there's no reason to slog through a book like you're in history class in college. You know what I mean? Like where you have to read books for school, like reading for leisure is not like that. One of the good things that you can quit a book. And sometimes like I've powered through, like if a friend tells me, oh, this book is so good. And I, I start to read it and I'm like, I don't know about this book. And I may, maybe I'll ask her and she'll say, oh, it gets better. So then I'm like, okay, I'll keep reading. Sometimes it doesn't get better. Like I hated Where the Crawdads Sing, which that's a very popular book. A lot of people liked it. I hated that book. And I knew I should have put that book in chapter two, but I slogged through it. But so there are times where I do keep going. But my general rule is if you don't like something, whether that's a TV show, a book, a movie, whatever, just stop like participating in that activity because you don't need to do that with your time. Yes. So good. I fully agree with that. I mean, of course there is value to get out of, you know, some books that might be harder to read or slower to read. I have to say that every book is like fun. I mean, I read like nonfiction books. Like I read, we were eight years in power by, uh, I think it was Todd Nahisi Coates. And it's about like, um, is it was about race in America from like slavery to the Obama years. That book was so hard to read. I was like, this is miserable, <laughs> you know, but it was good. It was informative. I felt like I was learning and I'm like, this is good to like get through. It's so, like all the books aren't, you know, they're not necessarily fun to read, but there was a book that I read. It was a, it was a, a suspense thriller, which I like suspense thrillers, but this one, the, I always say I will not read my worst nightmares. I don't read, like, I won't read a story about a child being kidnapped, for instance, because that sounds like my worst nightmares. Like I would not, I'm not, like, so if I realize that's what, where the book is going, I'm not reading this. So I think it's important that we pay attention to what we're putting into our minds 
and into our hearts, into our spirits. And so in those instances, I'm definitely like, this is not edifying me at all. This is not benefiting me at all. I'm just not going to read it. But some books are good for like learning. And so I'll read them if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's important. That's, I think that I struggle the most with a nonfiction book and it's funny because there are times I can look back and see that I devoured nonfiction books, but I don't know what it is. It's just like it's such a culture where there's so much consumption happening. Like you're consuming content or consuming a TV show. It's just like sometimes your brain needs a break, but nonfiction books where you're really learning something valuable, that can be important to, to maybe push yourself through, um, which I guess you might have kind of answered this, but kind of goes along the same lines of what we were talking about. What do you look for in a book? I like what you said about how you used to read a lot of nonfiction. I used to read a ton of what I guess they call like personal development books. Like I used to be all about that. I mean, if you look at the personal development books that came out in 2019, I probably read all of them. Like I read about minimalism and like career and all these things. Well, I, what, I don't know, once the pandemic like really got going, I was tired of like (laughs) people trying to motivate me. (laughs) (laughs) which sounds kind of funny, but I was like, I don't want to, you know, you're reading these books by these people who, you know, are saying excellent things about going for your goals and, you know, working towards this thing and doing this. But I'm like, right now, I just want to like escape from all this. And so I really got into fiction books. And that's, that really is when reading took off for me in 2020 is when I switched to like reading more fiction books. Now with fiction books, sometimes it's tough because I don't like um, some of the more popular ones. Like I don't like a lot of romance books. I I don't know. I'm just not really into that. Um, But I usually pick books that um, are, tell a good story, but aren't necessarily like, I don't know, like workplace lovers or something like that. I don't know. But I I also look at popular lists. Like there's Oprah, she had her book club, Reese Witherspoon, Jenna Bush Hager, um, Goodreads, and and like Barnes and Noble, they all have lists of books they recommend. And sometimes that can help me pick out a book. Um, I follow different people on Instagram who they post exclusively about books. You know, everybody has that, that niche on social media. Um, so I follow those people. We call it like bookstagram. And so I follow that hashtag and then I find books that way. But I usually look for a book that tells like a really good story. I do like suspense thrillers. I don't mind romance books. I, it has to be like the right kind of book. So, um, but I like, I just like a book that's going to like, uh, pull me in and not be like super long, but not be like too short where you don't tell a good story. So it's kind of hard because I read a variety of books. If you look at my Goodreads, you can see what kinds of books I read and it's like all over the place. So and I do still read some, I read some personal finance books, some personal development. I read Christian living books. Like I really like Joel Osteen's books because they're very like positive, like very, I just like to be in that positive mindset um, with his books. Like you're going to be great. And you know, God's going to move in your life and it's going to be awesome. And sometimes you need that, you know, <laughs> sometimes you need that. So, um, but I also, I read like Atomic Habits was one of my favorite books I read last year. And I recommend that to anyone. And it's about building habits and things like that. Um, which, but if you're, you know, in the middle of a pandemic and you feel like you don't want to be motivated, then like, yeah, I understand that. Cause that's how I was. I'm like, I'm not reading any more personal development books. And I will say this real quick. I like minimalism books and books about minimalism, but sometimes the authors can be really smug, which I like to hear how they were able to eliminate all this stuff in their lives. And that's fantastic. But sometimes it can be able to come across like, and you know, you follow these people on Instagram and it's the same thing. So <laughs> there are certain people like I'm really excited about minimalism, minimalist moms podcast. She has a book, Diane. She's actually from Columbus where, where I live at too. I'm excited for her book because she's awesome. But there's been some other people where I'm like, I don't want to read their minimalist book. So (laughs) I can relate. And I honestly, I read a few books about minimalism in the beginning and I've read ones that are along the same lines of just like, you know, intentional living or something like that. But there can, I mean, with all things minimalism, whether it's someone on Instagram or whatever, it's just, it can feel like this is the only way. And, you know, mm-hmm. if you're not doing it, like, what's wrong with you? Um, I can, I can totally relate to that. I love hearing just about the variety that you read. I, I would probably say that I am even like along those same lines when I do read, when I have better habits in my life uh, for reading <laughs> that I, I don't, you know, sit in one genre. Um, but I kind of want to switch gears and talk a little bit about our kids. 
I want to take a minute to thank today's sponsors making this episode possible. I'm so excited to be working with Indeed. Indeed Indeed.com is a website that I have used in the past to find multiple jobs. It's so easy to use and recently I learned that it is also a great website to help you with hiring. You can hire great people faster with Indeed and only pay for the results and get back time into your schedule. Indeed.com is a hiring site that helps you find quality candidates with Indeed Instant Match. Indeed searches through millions of resumes in their database to help show you great candidates instantly. You can do the part that you really need to do faster, and that's meeting and hiring great people. Unlike some hiring sites, Indeed gives you full control and payment flexibility, delivering a quality shortlist faster. With Indeed, there are no long-term contracts and you can pause your account at any time. You only have to pay for what you need. If you want your quality shortlist, you need Indeed. And right now, our listeners get a free $75 credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash intention. This is Indeed's best offer available anywhere. Again, you'll get a free $75 credit at Indeed.com slash intention. Indeed.com slash intention. I also want to thank She's Birdie. Safety is something that is always in the back of my mind, whether I'm walking the loop around my neighborhood or running errands with my daughter. And I'm so excited to share She's Birdie with you because it has given me peace of mind. Birdie is a personal safety alarm designed to be easy to carry and simple to use. When you activate your Birdie with a quick pull, the alarm emits a loud 130 decibel siren along with a flashing strobe light to help deter an attack. Unlike pepper spray or other deterrents, Birdie will not harm you. You can feel confident to use it without worry. It goes wherever you go. I keep mine latched onto my small bag that I carry everywhere, but you could easily attach it to your keys or anything that you carry with you often. Birdie has thousands of five-star reviews and I love it because it's small, it's sleek, it's cute, it's easy to use, and most importantly, I feel safe (laughs) and it puts my mind at ease. Right now, She's Birdie is offering listeners of With Intention 15% off your first purchase when you go to she'sbirdie.com slash intention. Again, go to she'sbirdie.com slash intention for 15% off your order. S-H-E-S-B-I-R-D-I-E dot com slash intention for the exclusive deal for podcast listeners of 15% off. How do you establish a culture for reading within your home um, and with your son? So I really, really want to raise a reader. Like that's something that I always knew when I had a kid. I was like, I really hope that he or she loves reading. Um, my husband doesn't love reading, and, but I do. So I really want to like, you know, really establish that. Um, and now that I am a parent, I know that it's, it's, not as it's not super hard but it's like not easy either and you don't really know if you're doing it until they get older (laughs) you know but I think that I'm trying to lay that foundation now so um so one of the things I try to do is really make sure that I am modeling reading for him and that can be tough sometimes because I do read using my iPad I listen to books but I try to make sure that he also sees me like sitting down reading a book at least sometimes um and I think that because our kids are always imitating and so to encourage him to read and he's never sees he never sees me read i don't think that really works so i try to model for him um i try to read every day ish like i i think that sometimes people get the impression of me on social media that i'm like sitting down reading all these books to alexander every day and there are probably moms who do that i am not one of them <laughs> i do i feel like when we sit down it's like a marathon and i'm reading like three books to him or i'll go like two days and be like I haven't read to him in like two days, you know, and you know how it is when you have a toddler. Sometimes some days are busier than others. And um, I try to, I try to read to him every single day, at least one book if I can. Um, so I always say I read every day ish. I also try to make sure that he has a lot of books um, to read, like available to him at home. So we do the library a lot. Like I, I like to go on the library's website, put holds on books and then go pick them up and take them home as opposed to walking around the library for like, a half an hour with him and trying to pick out books that's tough at this age I do try to do it a little bit so that he can see but it's so hard to do anything with a three-year-old so I try to let I try to look for books online that I think that he would like and then I request them from the library so that he has them but he also has those books that he just goes back to over and over again I also try to do what I call um what I call it like 
an active book. So, because I do have a, I don't know how it is having a girl, you can speak to that a little bit, but having a boy, this kid is all over the place. So I try to do like active books. So like a fingertip trail book, like a book that he could put his finger in. I try to do like lift the flap or there's a book I have where you can like turn the clock on it or even doing sound effects. There's a great book called Quiet and it, it goes through all the noises in your house, like tap, tap, tap of the, of the, um, silverware on the table like knock 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 on the door so I try to do the sound effects and stuff like that because he likes that and um he likes like the Mo Williams books the elephant and piggy where they're like you broke my new toy like he loves that so I try to like I try to make the books um active for him so that he will pay attention and I've heard that even if they're running around the room as long as they're listening then that counts as reading, but I do want him to come over sometimes at least and like look at the pages. So I think those active books um, really help. Something in my area, I don't know if it's in everybody's area, is um, Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. I don't know if you've heard of this, but Dolly Parton apparently partnered with um, some people and they have, they, where they send books for free once a month to any kid um, from baby all the way to five years old. And so they pick out different books and they just mail them in the mail for free. You have to sign up for the program and see if it's in your area. But I know it's all over the country. It's also like in the, in the UK, it's like in Australia. I mean, it's everywhere. So that's a good way to get like a free book in the mail every month. And so just trying to refresh those books and also go back to some of those favorites. We do both kind of. So, yeah. We love the elephant and picky books as well. <laughs> Those are ones that will always keep her attention. But I definitely, you know, as I would say that when she was younger, it was like books were her favorite toys. She loved flipping through them. And especially when we had a lot of the board, it was like board books only or else it's mm-hmm. going to get ripped type of thing. And I just felt like, oh, I'm doing such a good job. Look at this. <laughs> and now it's like, I can't sit still for a whole book most of the time or, you know, it's not like I'll say, do you want to read? And it's not the first response is not. Yay. Yes. I'm like, Oh, what did I, where did I go wrong here? But, um, of course there's, there are so many other things that they're constantly wanting to do. They're wanting to play, they're active. And I love the idea of a more active book. I always find that she, she likes anything that's like, all, a lot of our alphabet books right now because she wants, she's, it's just something she's interested in learning, but also a lot of them have like, you know, the finger tracing, like you were saying, and, or mm-hmm. a flap to lift. So, um, I love the idea of just like kind of paying attention to what, what they like and what they're interested in. Um, and the library trick, is, that's genius because the, the, Anytime I would take her to the library, which I have not taken her to a library since before the pandemic, and I want to do that again soon, but it's just, we walk out with nothing that I would have (laughs) wanted to walk out with, which is great. It's good that we walked out with the book, but it was stressful and I wanted to look for a certain thing and who knows what we walked out with, like a Christmas book during Easter or something. (laughs) (laughs) They make it impossible. I cannot look at books with him. Like... No. So no. putting the books on hold and then just picking them up is the best way when at this age, for sure. And I don't do long books either. That kind of might sound bad, but I hear, like I'll see posts on Instagram where someone will promote a book and I'll, I'll be like, oh, it's way too long. We're not, <laughs> he's not going to sit through that. So yeah. <laughs> or I'll skip pages. Like, I don't know. I'm like, okay, we're going to skip a few pages. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. There will be days when we are reading and she, she does get interested and then she just wants to keep reading more and more books. And it's like right close to bedtime. I definitely skip some pages there for sure. Yeah. And they can be doing other stuff. Like sometimes Alexander will be building magnet tiles. And so he's sitting there quietly building his magnet tiles. So I'll sit down next to him and read one of his books that, you know, that way I feel like, okay, he's listening and I'm reading. And this is like, this counts like check <laughs> we did that so because it's not always going to be him sitting next to me quietly like listening to a book that's so kind of going back to I guess it could be a recommendation of favorite children's books or your own book like a recent read what books do you recommend starting with for anyone who's like all right I'm doing it I'm motivated to read now there's so many books and I, I love recommending books but it's hard to do without knowing like what genre the person likes to read um, currently I'm reading this book called Finley Donovan is Killing It. And it's like a 
It's like a suspense book, but it's also kind of funny. I always like books that feature moms as like the main character because I can relate to that really well. Um, there's there's a Atomic Habits, which I mentioned earlier for like, if you like the practical strategies for like building habits, like that's a really good book. Um, they Can't Kill Us All by Wesley Lowry is a really good book. If, if you were interested in like the, um, the social justice movement last summer, um, he wrote a really good book prior to that, like in 2018, 2019, it kind of gives you the backstory of everything that happened that led up to um, the big movement that was last summer. And I think that book is phenomenal. Like it is, it gives, it gives so much information. It like tells all these stories. And you're like, oh, so it kind of gives you a better idea. Um, uh, let's see. I also like, like I was saying, I like books that feature moms, like um, Overdue Life of Amy Byler. That's a good one. The Lies That Bind by Emily Giffen. I like when books are either going to be made into a show or a movie, or they already are a show or a movie. Um, Little Fires Everywhere is a good example of that. That stars Reese Witherspoon and Carrie Washington on Hulu. But there's also a book, so that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love like connecting with people and talking about book recommendations. And, like if you like suspense thrillers, I think there's a book called The Last Flight that is so good. It's about it's about two women who are trying to escape their lives and they trade plane tickets at the airport. And so it's like everything that goes after that. And it's just so interesting. So there's like so many different good books out there. Um, and I like recommending them, but it's hard to like pinpoint the perfect book. And as far as like children's books, like I said, I do a lot of active books with Alexander. So um, we love Mo Willems. We love Elephant and Piggy. Um, I also try to um, get books that kind of have to do with whatever season that we're in, like, like, over the past few weeks, there's been a lot of conversation about racism against Asians in America. And so I looked around his bookshelves. I'm like, he doesn't really have like very many books featuring Asian characters. Let's change that. So I went to the library and got like eyes that kiss in the corners. That's a really popular book. Um, I dream of Popo is another one. Um, and so I try to, I try to make sure he has books because I'm black. I know you can't see me, but <laughs> I mean, you can see me, but people watching this can't see me. So I'm black and I try to, and my husband is white and so my son is biracial so i try to make sure there's books that feature black characters white characters biracial characters but also books that feature women that feature children in wheelchairs that feature maybe a child that's deaf or doesn't talk i mean i try to make sure that he is um seeing and books all kinds of different characters and that is so important and the library helps a lot with that because it's not realistic that you're going to go to the store and buy all these books but you can rent a few books, see what you like, and then maybe purchase one if you if he really likes it, or just, you know, take them back and like read different ones the next time. So I try to I try to be cognizant of the images that he's seeing in books. And he's so young, but I think it's I think it's also for me to have a habit of getting books that feature different kinds of characters so that when he is older and is more aware, it's already something that we do. And I'm not like, you know, out here with an eight year old, like, oh my gosh, you need a book that features like someone who has disabilities you know I, I want to feel like that's already what we do so um that's a very another long-winded answer to your question about book recommendations there are some great instagram accounts like here we read is a good one everyday reading is a good one they recommend books um for children and i always look at their recommendations and i go right in the library's website type in the books put them on hold and go pick them up so um, that's also a, a really good Instagram is a really good resource for finding good children's books. This episode is also brought to you by Public Goods, the one stop shop for sustainable, high quality, everyday essentials. I love that Public Goods searches the globe to find clean, healthy, eco friendly, and innovative products. I personally love their dental floss. I like knowing that I'm using floss without any weird ingredients, and I love the little reusable glass floss container as well. On the opposite side of the spectrum, their cocoa almonds do not last for more than a couple of days, maybe even just a couple of hours in my house. We love them that much. I love that they develop each of their products to be free of unhealthy ingredients and harmful additives that are still common on drug and grocery store shelves. Knowing what's in your products and where they come from is important. Small changes in the way we shop can make a big impact on personal health and the world at large. To make it even better, their membership model keeps costs low and passes on more savings to their customers. You can make your first purchase with no obligation because with intention listeners can try public goods and receive $15 off their first public goods order with no minimum purchase. Just go to publicgoods.com intention or use code intention at checkout. 
at checkout. That's P-U-B-L-I-C-G-O-O-D-S dot com forward slash intention to receive $15 off your first order. All right, let's get back to today's episode. Yeah, I love those tips because it is, I think it's important, obviously, that we're thinking about what our kids like and what's going to keep their attention. But also at the same time, we want to be giving them values and uh, experiences that they might not be having in their everyday lives. Different people that they don't experience in their everyday lives, especially during a pandemic. Uh, all they're seeing is maybe you and your family, you know? So, um, and and then seeing themselves within the book pages. And all of that can happen from a book. This has all been so helpful. I'm going to link as many of the books that I can... I don't, as I'm editing through, I'll kind of write them down and I'll link as many as I hopefully can. Um, but if I miss any, of course, I'm sorry to anyone who's listening, but I'm going to try to link as many that you mentioned there. DMs will be flooded with people asking you for book recommendations since you, yeah, you I love like it. it. <laughs> I do. I love it. I love recommending books. Now, if you hate the book that I recommend, sorry, read a different one. <laughs> <laughs> Permission to, uh, to put it down and find something different. Um, okay. So kind of the last question. Um, what are your habit building tips? And you read Atomic Habits. So maybe you have some good tips from that or just like from your own life for someone who wants to start more of a habit and routine around reading in their life. I love talking about building habits um, because I ran in my first marathon in 2019, which is why I didn't have a reading habit because I had a running habit. And I thought I'd never run a marathon and then I did. And so I like talking to people about that. Because um, I think that there are very specific things that, that you can um, do to reach any type of goal. And I like goals. I think there's two types of goals. There's goals that rely on other people. And there's goals that rely mostly on you. So like I had a goal to get, um, I wanted to go back to news last year. And I was like, I'm going to get a full-time job in news. But that didn't just rely on me. It relied on like some other things too. Um, but if you're saying, I want to run a marathon, that relies on you, you know, obviously barring any type of injury or anything like that. So um, these are good habit building tips for things that rely on you. So um, number one, deciding that you want to do it. And I think that that's a big one. (laughs) Decide that you want to do it, make it easy for you to do. So with, with reading, for instance, like I said, when I am, when I am done with the book, I already have another book ready to go. So that makes it easy for me to go to the next book. I'm not having to search around for another book for a while. Um, I also have books like preloaded to my Kindle app. I have books already on Audible. I have books already requested at the library. I'm always getting books, um, you know, on hold and things like that. So I think making it easy for you to do. Um, Find other people who share this interest. Instagram helps a lot with that. If you can find other people who also are trying to start a reading habit, who have already built that reading habit and like, and people who uh, are doing things that you want to be doing. I think it's great to connect with those people and just following them kind of keeps it fresh in your mind. Like if I'm scrolling bookstagram and I, or Instagram, I say bookstagram cause that's the hashtag. But if I'm scrolling Instagram and I come across, um, there's somebody on here who just finished like this other book. And I'm like, you know, I wanted to read that book. I'm going to like get off Instagram and go read for a little bit. So I think that following people just kind of keeps you motivated. Um, also figure out a way to track progress. I track all the books that I read on Goodreads. I just started doing that um, last year. It's um, it's a free app, very similar to Facebook and Instagram, except it doesn't suck you in because it's like not a, not a great interface. But you can like put the books in that you want to read. You can read reviews. You can write reviews. And it'll uh, keep track of how many books you read that year. So if you have a goal for 2020, you say your goal is, or for 2021, say your goal is 21 books this year. You can just put that in there, add the books and it counts it for you. So you're not having to wonder how many books have I read because I already has it listed there. The last one is decide what success looks like. Cause I think that sometimes you just say you want to read more. So if you read for 10 minutes today, is that more than yesterday? Okay. So are you done? <laughs> like, or do you have like an actual, like what does success look like? Does success look like you reading one book this month? then you know when you got to the end of the month that you either did it or you didn't. So decide what you want to do, make it easy to do, find other people who share this interest, figure out a way to track progress and determine what success looks like 
for you. That last one is so helpful. I mean, not just for reading, they're all helpful for multiple, you know, whatever habit you want to build. But I think that makes so much sense because so many of us can say, yeah, I want to read more. Um, and having that image of, okay, well, what, what would that look like for me then? Maybe it's one book a month. Maybe it's a hundred books a year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if I can get to that level ever, but that is, that's so awesome. So I have two questions that I ask every guest before we go. And I have absolutely loved talking about books, if you can't tell, because I could, I feel like I have 40 more questions I want to ask of just <laughs> about certain books or <laughs> about, you know, just specifically reading in general, but I'm going to stop myself here and say the first question that I ask every guest is what is one way that you choose intention in your everyday life? I had to really think about this because I, I'm like, I'm all over the place. Do I choose intention? But I do. I mean, reading is an intention. Um, but one of the things I really like to do, like I think about when I'm in bed at night and what makes me feel like today was a good day. And I think if I connected with my son in like any meaningful way, whether that was like a five minute connection where we like sat and read a book or we played and built tunnels together, or it was like a long connection where like today, for instance, we went to the zoo. So I feel like we connected. So I think that, um, that, Every day I try to try to make sure I connect with my son every day because I know that if I don't, you know, I'll get in bed at night and think like, oh, I didn't connect with him today. You know, so I try to and so I try to keep that in my mind and always try to find that moment of connection, whether it's a short moment or a long moment. I try to connect with him every day. I love that so much. I love that like final thought at night idea. Um, and the second question that I have is what is something that you are loving right now? Okay, so I have two things. <laughs> First is the air fryer. <laughs> so yes. I, when I was going on my whole, like, I'm going to be a minimalist thing, I cleared off my counters, which I highly recommend uh, clearing off your counters in the kitchen. But with that, what happened was that my appliances were then out of sight and out of mind. So I had an air fryer that I never used. And so recently I've been pulling that out, putting it on the counter and using it. So I love my air fryer. Um, so if you have air fryer recipes, send them to me because I am trying to figure it all out and do it. And it's really cool. Um, the other thing I'm really loving right now is my reading area. So um, my husband and I finally got some bookshelves and I put it like in a section of our dining room that we don't, we never use our dining room. So we put bookshelves in there and I put like a picture of Alexander reading on one side of the wall. And I put a quote on the other side that just says, um, one more, just one more chapter. And so I just love that area. It's got like the books that, that are for the libraries. So they're, they're not getting lost around my house anymore. So <laughs> it's just nice to have like a dedicated like bookshelf. And like, and I don't really, I don't really read in there as much, but all the books are in there, which is, which has been really helpful to my organizing and because I'm not very organized. So the reading area is awesome. <laughs> we must be on the same wavelength lately because I, use our air fryer every night. I, I've used it since we got it in December, but it's just, it's the best. I use it for, usually I'm like, I need more than one because I want to cook everything. <laughs> right. But also we just finally put books on a shelf too, since we moved in. So literally did that this weekend. It's life changing. Like <laughs> now you know where the books are. <laughs> <laughs> Makes all the difference. They were shoved in a closet before, which was not good. And oh, like on other random shelves throughout the house. So I can, I can relate to that too. <laughs> well, thank you so much. This has been so much fun to just get to talk about such a fun subject and um, to just get to talk to you in general. So thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Like I said, I've listened to your podcast a ton and it is a huge honor to be a guest on your show this time. I don't know about you, but I loved those five steps that Elisa gave at the end to help guide us towards creating a reading habit in our daily lives. I think it can absolutely apply to any habit that we want to build, but I am definitely going to apply it to a reading habit for myself because I am lacking, as you heard me talk about in this episode. So that's my challenge to you this week, is just to use those five steps to help you implement any habit that you wanna to add to your life. If that habit is reading, then bonus points. Just kidding. No points at all to be given out for these challenges. These are just for fun and something that you can take or leave if they help you apply this episode to your actual life. 
I'm so grateful you are here and listening in. And if you enjoyed this episode, would you share it with a friend or share it on Instagram or share it anywhere you like to share things? I know that I say that every week, but it really does help invite others into the show. And I enjoy talking to you here each week. So I appreciate that so much. That is all I have for today's episode. So I look forward to talking to you right back here again on the next episode.